We have been on the road now for nearly three years. Can you believe it? And over that time, we have come up with some really amazing and cost-effective ways that you can maintain your caravan for those long trips. And today we're gonna to go through seven of them. So let's get into it. First step, you need to make sure that your general maintenance and your checks in the caravan have been completed. You're always gonna check your brake lights and your hazard lights and your blinkers and your brakes are working. Quite often over the last few years, we've had some instances when maybe one of the indicator lights haven't working or the brakes haven't been working or whatever. And we've generally traced it back to the plugs at the back of the car and the back of the caravan. There are some maintenance tips that you need to make sure probably once every few weeks that you have handled with these plugs to make sure that you're not going to have these instances where you're not getting power to lights and brakes and so on. So at the back of the car, we've got the female end of the 12 pin plug, a grey Anderson plug and we've got a red Anderson plug. If you have a look at these Anderson plugs, they're actually quite dirty and dusty. That's just simply through our normal day-to-day -day travel in the car. So what you need to do, you need to make sure that those connections at the car and the caravan are clean. WD-40 have a couple of really awesome products that will help you in this. The WD-40 air duster. You're gonna get in here and just blow it out. And that basically will get rid of a lot of the surface dust that's in and around the plug. There is still quite a bit of dust in there. I mean, if I give it another squirt. What you need to get then is you need to get one of these WD contact cleaners. They're like $20 at Bunnings. This will cost you about $15. And all you gotta do with this one is just spray it in. It doesn't leave any residue, it's fast drying. And maybe have a look in there now. That's super, super clean. All right, give it a bit of a spray in your 12 pin as well. On the caravan, it's pretty similar, but there are a couple of other things you might need to consider. So let's go over there and I'll show you. At the front of the caravan, it's a pretty similar procedure as I said, but the first thing we always do is we need to make sure that our contact points are covered. We've got one of these navigator bags that basically what you do, you put the plugs in there during, you know, while you're stationary and they, that does the trick. It's not perfect. Our plugs are pretty dirty. Now I haven't cleaned these now probably for about a month. The process for this is exactly the same. You just give it a bit of a spray. Perfect. The only difference is now with the 12 pin plug on the caravan, what can happen with these plugs? Sometimes these plugs can actually get compressed to a point where they're not actually working properly. You get a little razor blade and you insert it in between those two points and you just prise it open a little bit. If you have got a brake light or a hazard light on the back of the car that's not working, 99 times out of 100, it's caused by these pins here being too compressed. So the second thing you need to consider when you're traveling in a caravan full time on the road is your security. I know there are alarms and there are immobilizers and so on that you can get installed in the caravan. They are really, really great. We haven't gone down that track purely because it costs too much money. But what we choose to do is we choose to put a lock through um, our hitch and also on our wheel. So we've got these Covix locks. This first one is a lock that you can buy that can suit any sort of hitch. DO45 like this one, DO35. It can also work for a tow ball as well. So all it basically does, right, it just fits through there. It's got a very annoying alarm. If someone comes along and tries to take it off, it sounds an alarm, which I think is about 80 decibels, which is pretty loud. It's super annoying. The way you turn your alarm on is you put your key in, hear that beep, your alarm's on. So it's sweet. Anybody comes along and tries to take it off, or if the caravan starts to move, the alarm's going to sound and you're gonna know someone's up to no good. All right, so the other area that you can also lock in your van are your wheels. Now again, we're not sponsored by Covix, but Covix makes some great little um, devices, all right? This here is a Covix cable, pretty heavy duty. I think it'll take quite a bit for it to somewhat to cut through. We just simply feed it through here, pull it around like that, and you get your, both your ends, and then you, and there you go. Alarm is on, we're sweet. Somebody comes along to try to move the van, the alarm here is gonna sound, and it's one of those really annoying high-pitched sounds. Even if you're at free camps or whatever, there's always gonna be someone around somewhere. I think our whole security setup, I think it cost us about 250 bucks. That was for the cables, the both locks and so on. At the end of the day, I think if somebody was intent, 100% intent on, on sealing your caravan, they could probably find a way. So make sure that your insurance is up to date and that you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's. So with our particular policy, we had to have a wheel lock and we had to have a, a hitch lock. When you take the insurance policy out, they don't necessarily tell you that. 
it's in the fine print so make sure you read the fine print very very carefully because if you haven't got all the bits and pieces on your caravan that they've specifically said you need you may not be covered all so right so your tires and your wheels now we're really lucky in this caravan and we've got a compressor in the van for the airbag so we can use that to blow up our tires before we had this whiz bang system we had a little portable compressor now you don't need to go off and spend thousands of dollars in getting a compressor installed in your van or your car you can get one of these things from bunnings i think for about 90 dollars they're a bit slow but they do the trick right this can blow up anything so it can blow up your airbags your footballs your soccer balls or your tires check your pressures in your tires depending on where you're driving and you're driving on bitumen we inflate to 50 psi we check that once every couple of weeks just to make sure everything is fine if we are going on dirt roads we drop it down to somewhere between 35 30 psi because the softer the pressure is the more surface area on the tire the less chance you're going to get of getting bogged so that's really important all right so the other super duper important thing about our wheels is the amount of torque you've got on the nuts on the wheel this particular muddy tire we need a hundred and five foot pounds of pressure what that means i've got no idea you've got to get yourself a torque wrench it's not going to cost you a lot of money you can get ones for 50 bucks at a hardware store i think this one costs us about 100 i don't know what the difference is between 150 other than the one cost 50 and one costs 100 i don't know why i spent 100 but anyway what you got to do this is super important because we have found quite a number of people on the road who have lost a tire you got to make sure it's just right get yourself a torque wrench you got to do this every couple of weeks it's going to give you the right amount of torque every single time so what you do you put it on the nut and you pull it down now when you hear that click it means that the pressure is perfect and what you do you go through every single one and you make sure that every nut is at the right torque it's really good exercise too so get yourself a torque wrench get yourself a little portable compressor it'll save you a world of pain now distributing the weight in the van is so important and it is your responsibility to make sure the van is nice and safe. If you have too much weight at the back of the van, the van will have an increased likelihood that it might start to sway. For us, look, our back, the back of our van is super clean. All we have is our spare wheel, albeit filthy, but we don't have a lot of stuff in the back of the van. There are a lot of manufacturers that have wood boxes and tool boxes and stuff. Great. Make sure you don't overload it, right? Because you put too much weight there, too much sway, becomes a nightmare driving, you don't want that. So the other area you need to make sure that you don't have too much weight is in the cupboards uh, in the caravan. Anything really heavy, put it on the floor of the van over the axles. So we travel with our awning poles on the floor of the van, we travel with our dog uh, fence on the floor of the caravan. You know, we also put some water in our tanks because that also stabilizes the van as you're traveling. Make sure the water in your tank is either full or empty don't have it half and half the water can slosh around in there and again it can play havoc while you're driving you don't want that cool. battery care now a lot of us now have lithium batteries in our caravan lithium batteries are so easy but there are still some maintenance tips that you need to consider so lithium batteries love to be used they don't like being idle but lithium batteries love being used below 80 percent don't be too concerned if the batteries do get down below 80% because the batteries love being down there and they love being recharged again. 80% is the sweet spot for lithium batteries. Lithium batteries can also go down to below 10%. If you have an AGM battery, they don't like being used as much. They definitely don't like being used below 50%. If you drop your AGM battery down below 50%, you gotta get it charged somehow. Either plug it in your car, plug it in the into a power point or whatever and charge those batteries, get them back up to 100. A lot of us have invested in generators and so on. We don't have a generator, but look, if the batteries have dropped down to a significant amount, what we do is we just plug the car in, turn it on, run it for a few hours, get it back up to 50% and we're sweet. Generators are expensive, they're noisy, they're smelly, they're heavy. Just have a think about it. You may not need it because you got a pretty good battery charger generally with you all the time in your car. Now we've noticed the difference between having a clean solar panel and a dirty solar panel is somewhere between about 10 and 15 percent in terms of power coming into the caravan. So you've got to keep those solar panels clean. All you have to do, hey, is get up there, get on the roof, give them a scrub, give them a clean and you're sweet. And do that every couple of weeks. Well, that 10 or 15% can make a big difference. All right, so the last tip for today is 
how to pack your van when you're actually traveling is quite often it's easy to forget these simple things so make sure everything and there's nothing inside the oven that's going to move around and break that glass in the oven uh, make sure there's nothing in the fridge that's going to push the fridge open you're going to end up with a big mess on the bottom of the fridge that's happened to us before we also put our coffee machine inside the sink make sure also that the shower head is not on the wall make sure it's wrapped up on the floor on the floor on the floor of the shower it can also fall when it falls it can fall pretty hard at times you don't want to put a hole in that shower and when you're in a hurry to leave it's easy to forget and we have forgotten once or twice uh, we've forgotten the different things on the bench and we've just been lucky we've come back and they're still on the bench so double check triple check make sure there's nothing there that's going to damage your van all right so i hope you enjoyed today's video short and sweet but i hope it was really informative so out of all those seven my top three would have to be check your connections on your caravan make sure they're clean make sure they're dust free make sure they're working number two make sure that weight distribution in your caravan is good even if you've been on the road a little bit longer and you've grown a bit more accustomed to the way things are in the van just glance over it occasionally and make sure you don't have too much weight on the back of the van or up the top of the van and number three security just get yourselves a good hitch lock get yourselves a good a good wheel lock even if you spend most of your time in a caravan park believe me it's worth it all right so look next week we're gonna be back with another episode we look forward to seeing you then and take care See ya. Cause I found my way.